Afternoon, Ross. It uh, seems like you guys, uh, you know, you had a really bad run of injuries among the linebacking core last year. It's already kind of started this year with Terrell getting hurt. Just what are you guys trying to do to, to limit that in practice? You maybe not go as hard, not tackle to the ground. How do you try to keep those guys healthy? No, I don't think we'll ever, you know, not go as hard. But I think just the training staff's done a really good job always of uh, trying to keep us safe, put us in the best positions. And uh, I think in the off season, the strength staff has done a good job as well as like, kind of identifying where we've been having a lot of the injuries, try to alter that, alter the workouts to, you know, strengthen something different that'll maybe help prevent that, so. Over here on the left side, uh, last row on the aisle. Obviously, you guys are the hunted again. Do you guys, as a team, like playing the front runners, come get us sort of attitude? Uh, does it matter at all to you? Uh, I don't think we really, you know, take much stock into that. You know, that's kind of why you come to the, you know, Alabama. Uh, to be, you know, on top and hopefully at the end of the season hold up that, you know, trophy. So, um, you know, we don't take much too much stock in it, but we know that at the end of the day we have to play our best every game that we're going to get, you know, people's best shot. So that's something that we've, you know, had to work on and, you know, we can't be up and down during the season. So go over here all the way to the left on the front row. What sort of similarities do you see between Jerry Judy and Calvin Ridley? Well, um, you know, those guys are really close when they were here, when Calvin was here. I think just Jerry being from Florida, um, they've always just had a special bond. Uh, I think the work ethic, you know, um, Jerry's a quiet guy as well. So I think just, you know, he just kind of put his head down and wants to work. And he's always been in, you know, doing extra work and running extra routes with all the guys. So I see that similarity with Calvin and just the talents there, obviously, with, uh, you know, Jerry Judy. He's a very talented guy. So we'll go over here on the left side on the middle row. Hey, Ross, uh, the versatility you guys have on this offensive line, obviously, you know, you've played multiple, pretty much everybody on that line has played multiple right. positions. How, has, how does that help you individually, and do, do you feel like some of these younger guys, uh, that, that'll be vital for their progress, the versatility? Yeah, I think just having guys be able to play multiple roles, whether an injury comes along, you know, and some guys got to bump in that we can play at a high level. And I think even, you know, for NFL scouts and stuff like that, just showing that you can play more than one position, you know, I mean, they only carry, what, seven or eight offensive linemen now in the league. So you got to be able to play more than one position. And so I think, you know, having guys, like you said, that can play all multiple positions will really just help us in the long run and create depth along the line. We'll go over here standing in the camera platform. Uh, does it make your job easier getting Damien back, and what's it like blocking for him? Yeah, I mean, Damien's obviously a great back, and it uh, just makes it fun for us just knowing if we do our job that, you know, he could bust a big run at any time. So uh, it just makes us want to do our job better and, you know, block well for those guys, and uh, they make us look good as well. So um, we, we appreciate them, really. Go to the left side on the front row, right in the middle. Ross, you got a look at center, a uh, long look at center, I guess, two years ago. Right. How much more comfortable are you in that spot now than maybe you were in 2016? All right, so I think back then it was just kind of like I was trying it out, you know, see what happens. And so I think now it's like I'm really kind of trying to be a student of the center position. You know, I've been watching a lot of extra film, watching, you know, NFL tape of centers and like former centers, you know, Bradley Bozeman, Ryan Kelly, all those guys who I played with, watching their games just kind of, I mean, our coaching staff's really done a good job. I know we've had a lot of former centers on our coaching staff right now. And so just kind of trying to pick their minds and just be a student, you know, of that position and just try to gain as much knowledge as I possibly can. Go over here on the right side on the back row. Uh, I guess fortunately for Alabama and unfortunately for the other 13 teams in the league, Nick Saban is not showing any signs of slowing down. Um, <laughs> What's it like to, to be around him? Uh, there's, there's been no drop off, I guess, since you've been there. And how long do you think he can, can, can coach? Yeah, you know, Coach Saban, you know, his resume speaks for itself. And uh, just his work ethic, just watching him work is unbelievable. Um, never seen a guy more driven. And just when he gets, you know, into his football mode, it's all business no matter what. And so um, I think, you know, that's just, it really explains our success. And so I don't see any signs of slowing down and haven't since I came here. So who knows, you know, how much longer he could coach. I, I think that he just really enjoys being a part of a team and just kind of having that team aspect. So I think he'll try to coach as long as possible. Go over here standing on the left side. Uh, you were speaking about Damian earlier. Uh, he can join some pretty elite company if he gets that third thousand yard season. Have yep. you guys talked about that as an offensive line? And just what would it mean for you guys? Because I know that reflects really well on you guys too. Right. I mean, yeah, we obviously want to see, you know, our backs have the most success as possible because, like you said, that does reflect on us. So, um, yeah, if we can get into that, be, that'd be awesome and just another notch on our belt. And um, 
yeah, for him, that mean a lot, I'm sure. So uh, just to see the, you know, him be happy and try to have you know, his success as well will translate into us, and we'll be excited for him. We'll go right here on the second row on the aisle. Hey, um, being a center, playing with two quarterbacks with different, playing with different throwing hands, how right. does that affect your game? Really doesn't. Um, you know, a lot of times we've been in the shotgun, so I'm just snapping the ball and trying to do my job. Um, so, you know, we don't really even notice the two quarterbacks, to be honest. Uh, I know that's probably cliche to say, but, um, you know, we, we got to block the same way, you know, the same way that we possibly do. And uh, so not too big of a difference, to be honest. Go right here on the front row on the end. Just in general, how long does it take for an offensive line to gel? I think that's probably the, you know, position group that takes the longest, to be honest. Um, and a lot of people don't have the patience for it, but it is, a you know, a long, drawn-out journey. So um, it, I don't think there's really even a time table for it. I just think it depends on who, you know, how the experience is on the offensive line and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, I just think, you know, going into fall camp, we'll be looking to gel more, and um, it should be exciting. we got the talent and the experience there. So. We'll go standing back here on the right side. Ross is quarterback battle. Everybody wants to know about it. And coach says, look, it's going to play itself out in camp, which is absolutely true. Right. But if you've ever been in a situation where you've been on a team with two such talented quarterbacks that you possibly scratch your head and go, man, both these guys are can't miss guys back there. Right. And I think, you know, since I've been here, there's always been like the QB battle. Um, you know, each year, ever since 2014. There's been something uh, who's going to start. So this isn't anything new to us, and it's you know it's panned out the right way in the past. So I think that you know we have that proven you know route of which way to take, and the coaching staff you know we we put our trust into them and to make the right decision. But yeah, like you said, both you know quarterbacks are so talented. Um, I don't think we can go wrong with either one. We'll go over here to the far left on the back row. Ross, you're playing with six true freshmen at times in the second half of that Georgia game. Alex, particularly in your unit coming in for Jonah. Is that something you even realized? Probably not at the time, but looking back, is that kind of hard to believe? Or is the expectation for true freshmen just the same as it is for a junior or senior? Yeah, the expectation is the same. We set that kind of from day one that, you know, this isn't high school anymore. You know, I mean, if you're going to be on the team, you're going to contribute. And a lot of the guys that did contribute, you know, they stepped up to the plate and they want to take on that role. They don't want to be treated as a freshman anymore. So. Um, you know, everyone on our team, I just show, that shows the depth that we have is that, you know, we've got a bunch of four and five star recruits every year and they come in and, you know, really take their job seriously and want to play early. So I think that just proves, you know, if you work hard and take it seriously that you can play on the biggest stage early, you know, 18 year old guys out there. So we'll go to the camera platform right there in the middle. Yeah. So, um, Ross, um, you, Alabama seen two great centers come out in the last couple of years with Ryan Kelly and, um, and Bozeman, um, what have you kind of learned from them and what are you kind of taking that from their advice and going to bring into this next season? Yeah, so I mean, both those guys, just playing next to those guys has been awesome. And like you said, I've learned a lot as far as um, just picking their brains, kind of seeing what they see, uh, footwork, you know, going back and watching game tape of guys like those two that you know, you know, have had great careers and so that they're doing the right thing all the time. Um, I think that their leadership as well. Uh, just being able to take on that vocal leadership role and really running the show at center, I think is what I've taken probably the most out of. And I've really tried to work at this summer as being more of that vocal leader, you know, with uh, with the guys. And just, uh, you know, the center has to be confident in his calls and everything like that. So I think that's been the most thing that I've tried to improve on this summer. Got time for just a few more. So if you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Go right over here, second row, far left. Ross, obviously, Coach Saban talks about the quarterback winning the team over. What exactly does that mean to the player? Like, what, what, is, what does the quarterback have to do to win the team over? I think just prove it on the field. You know, I mean, you can sit there and say all you want about, you know, oh, I'm going to be this type of leader or whatever. But uh, I think that just proving it on the field, I think that's with any position, really, is, you know, you can say how good you want to be. But just going out there and, you know, I mean, going into fall camp, you know, we got a lot of practices ahead of us and scrimmages and stuff like that, that where those two can, you know, separate themselves and just see how it goes. So I think that that would, you know, just by their play and just whoever puts us in the most successful position to win. This video was brought to you by Bucks Island, making memories on the water with family and friends for 70 years.